Back to the basics. Sunglasses, check. Hat, check. Notes, check. Pepsi, check. Sources, check. And thick skin, check. Let's go. Wow, we are almost to 10,000 subscribers. We are very, very close. We greatly appreciate you hitting that like and subscribe button to help get us there. As a college football YouTuber, it is my duty to come out with my own preseason top 25. And most college football YouTubers do it in stages. We release our initial top 25 after the national championship. Then we release another top 25 kind of right before the summer. Then we release our final top 25 right before the season. And that's what this is. My final top 25 going into the regular season. This is not necessarily where I think these teams will finish. It's just my opinion of these teams right now. Honorable mentions, teams that didn't quite make the top 25, they came really, really close. First team, BYU, they could very well easily be a top 25 team, but just because of the teams that I have in the top 25, I didn't have room for BYU. Same thing for Kansas State. I think they're going to be a sleeper in the Big 12, but I just didn't have room for them in my top 25. I think Iowa is a borderline top 25 team, but they didn't make the cut. Cincinnati, I mean, they get an honorable mention, but I actually think that Cincinnati will take a significant step back this year. Houston. Houston gets an honorable mention. I just didn't have enough room to have them on there, but they could end up being a top 25 team. Nebraska gets an honorable mention. I think Nebraska wins a lot of those 50-50 football games that they didn't win last year, but they didn't quite make my top 25. Fresno State's going to be one of the best group of five teams in 2022, but I don't have them in my top 25 for now. I think Washington could be a sleeper in the Pac-12, but they didn't quite make it into my top 25, but I could see Washington end up being a top 25 team this year. Arkansas. Arkansas might be a better team than what they were last year, but their schedule is brutal. They didn't quite make my top 25. Same thing for LSU. I think LSU will be much, much better this year. They just didn't quite make it into my top 25. And finally, an honorable mention for Pitt. They will have a good defense, but losing Kenny Pickett and Jordan Addison was enough for me to keep Pitt out of my top 25. So here we go. Without no further ado, my top 25, my latest top 25, my final top 25 going into the college football season. Number 25, I'm going with South Carolina. I think Shane Beam is building something there in Columbia, South Carolina. South Carolina is going to be much improved this year. I think their schedule sets up nicely. They brought in a lot of talent from the transfer portal. South Carolina, a border top 25 team, but they made the cut. Number 24, Michigan State. Losing running back Kenneth Walker. Going to be a big deal for Michigan State. And that defense has a lot of questions. As good as Michigan State was last year, their defense was terrible. Number 23, Texas. Texas just has too much talent. I think they have a big time bounce back year this year. And I think their schedule is massive. Manageable. Number 22, Oklahoma State. The reason I don't have Oklahoma State higher on this list is because they did lose their defensive coordinator, Knowles, and that defense was their bread and butter, and they lost some key pieces on the defense. But I think they brought back enough, and that schedule is manageable enough for them to be a top 25 team. Number 21, this is where I'm going to get pelted with homerism, but this is where I have West Virginia. I think West Virginia will have a revamped offense with offensive coordinator Graham Harrell with JT Daniels, and even if JT Daniels does get injured, Will Crowder is a confident quarterback and just the fact of having a pretty good offensive coordinator will give West Virginia a fighting chance in a lot of their games. They're going to have a good defense like they always do and now they'll have an offense to complement that defense. Number 20, this is where I have Penn State. Last year Penn State was looking really, really good early in the season but then Sean Clifford got injured early in the year and they had trouble ever since but if Sean Clifford stays healthy, Penn State could be higher in the ranking than I'm giving them right now. Number 19, UCLA. I think Chip Kelly has been quietly building something as far as a good program there at UCLA. Last year, they finished 8-4. Their schedule is manageable. I think UCLA is a solid top 20 team this year. Number 18, Kentucky. I think Mark Stoops continues proving that he's a great head coach, and I think he's going to have Kentucky at least in the hunt for the SEC East, although I don't think Kentucky will actually win it. Number 17, Oregon. I think Oregon is actually going to have a good defense this year. They're actually going to have more questions on their offense than they are on their defense, but I do think they bring back enough, and their schedule is actually much easier than what it was last year. I think Oregon's going to be a top 20 team this year. Number 16, Notre Dame. A lot of people have Notre Dame a lot higher than this, but they're in a big transition period and a very, very tough schedule. Combination of those two was enough for me to keep Notre Dame out of my top 15. Speaking of which, number 15, Wisconsin. Wisconsin brings back a lot from last year's team. I think they're going to be a much improved team this year. Schedule is much more manageable than what it was last year. Wisconsin could surprise some people this year. Number 14, USC. What more can I say? Lincoln Rally coming in. High expectations. The 
Trojans won the transfer portal. That's a big deal. Their schedule is more difficult than what it was last year, and that's the only thing that kept me from putting USC even higher on this list, but still a solid top 15 team. Number 13, Texas A&M, one of the all-time greatest recruiting classes. I just don't trust Jimbo Fisher, and that's why I don't have Texas A&M in my top 10. Number 12, Michigan. Can Jim Harbaugh actually sustain? He has talent up there in Ann Arbor. Last year, they had a breakout season. I don't think they're going to be that good, but they're going to be good enough to be a top 15 team. Number 11, NC State. The biggest thing for NC State is they could possibly have the best defense in the ACC. I just don't trust their offense. That's why I don't have NC State in my top 10, but still a solid team. Number 10, Oklahoma. They are in a big time transition. Lots of questions, but they still have a lot of talent. So I don't think they're going to be a playoff contender, but still a solid top 10 team. Number 9, Tennessee. And this comes down to Hendon Hooker being a dark horse Heisman. If that happens, then Tennessee most definitely will be a top 10 team. I think the schedule is manageable. I think Josh Heupel has his players believing. Watch out for Tennessee in the SEC East. They could possibly be contenders in the SEC East. Number 8, Ole Miss. I think Ole Miss is going to have one of the best offenses in the SEC West again. I know they lost Matt Coral, but they also gained Jackson Dart. And I trust Lane Kiffin whenever it comes to their offense. And their defense was much improved last year. Does the defense take another step forward this year? Number seven, Miami. I know I'm going to hear the chance of overrated. And that's okay, I understand. Mario Cristobal, a lot of hype building up right now. He went out and got talent. And there's a secret ingredient to their formula. And it's going to be Jamil Adai, the defensive backs coach. Every time he's jumped a team and went to another team, the new team has become elite on the defensive side of the ball. And I think that's exactly what happens to Miami. I think they will be elite on the defensive side of the ball. And Tyler Van Dyke could be a Dark Horse Heisman Trophy contender. Number six, Utah. I think Utah will be the best Pac-12 team. Will it be good enough to get into the playoffs? I don't trust them that much yet. But there is high expectations in Salt Lake City. And I do think Utah will be a good team. I just don't think they're going to be good enough to be a playoff team. Number five, Clemson. They're going to have a great defense in the ACC right up there with NC State. And hey, if they could just figure out the quarterback position, I don't care if it's DJ Ui Ungole or Will Shipley who's getting a lot of hype right now. Just figure it out and Clemson will be a very, very dangerous team this year. Number four, so this means the teams that I think has the best chance of getting to the playoffs. Not necessarily my picks, but the best chance. Number four is going to be Baylor, and it's all because of Dave Aranda. He has made me a believer, and the quarterback that won them so many games last year actually got beat out. So this new quarterback is going to be even better based on the fact that he beat out the other quarterback. So I think Baylor's offense is going to be even better, and I think their defense will be legit as well. I think Baylor will win the Big 12 and will have a chance to make the playoffs. Number three, Georgia. I'm confused, Golden Blue Dude. You've been projecting Georgia to go 10-2, and two, and I'm sticking with that. But I still think Georgia wins the SEC East, meaning they will get to the SEC Championship, and that gives them a chance to make the playoffs. They did lose three-fourths of that defense, but they're going to have a good offense. I know, it's going to be strange watching this Georgia team this year because they're going to be better on offense than they are on defense. And who knows, maybe that defense will be good enough to get Georgia into the playoffs. But for now, I have Georgia at number three, more than likely winning the SEC East, with a chance to make the playoffs. Number two, no doubt about it, I have Ohio State. The only issues they were having last year was on defense. They brought in Mike Knowles out of Oklahoma State. That's a big loss for Oklahoma State and a big game for Ohio State. So I think their defense is going to be much improved and they are going to be a solid number two. But the number one team in the nation, in my opinion, is going to be Alabama and it's not going to be close. I think they're going to be historically great comparable to the 2019 LSU, the 2020 Alabama, and the 2021 Georgia. That's how good Alabama is going to be this year. However, they do have a difficult schedule. So there is a chance that maybe Alabama could slip up in the game in their schedule because it is that tough, especially towards the end of the year when they have at LSU and at Ole Miss back-to-back. -back. That is brutal. But I think that's the only chance of Alabama grabbing a loss is in that back-to-back -back road trip to LSU and Ole Miss. So there you go, my last top 25, Paul. Y'all let me know what you think. I know you're going to blast me about the West Virginia pick. I already know that, so I'm prepared. But other than that, what do you agree with and what are your complaints about my final top 25? That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next show.